Tom Cotton often addresses issues like media deceit, excessive government involvement, foreign meddling, and individual responsibility, which reflect society's underlying anxieties about truth, freedom, and integrity. His topics resonate deeply, tapping into the public's yearning for leaders who will stand up for truth and guard democracy against both foreign and domestic threats. These conversations hit a nerve, amplifying the feeling that many people are losing control over institutions they believe should be working for them, not against them. I want to turn to a very different topic, and that is something that the Justice Department uh, said this week. They detailed a Russian government effort to stoke divisions in the U.S. using front organizations and social media prominent right-wing influencers like Dave Rubin and Benny Johnson, uh, who have ties to Tenet Media. And that's a company that the Justice Department says was being funded by Russian operatives. You sit on the Intelligence Committee. How worried are you that right-wing influencers, people who do have an impact on their constituents, are being funded either directly or indirectly by the Russian government in order to make an impact on this election? Well, first off, Dana, we haven't been in session, so I haven't seen any intelligence about this matter. I've only seen the allegations I've read in the newspaper. Um, people should not knowingly take money from the government of Russia or Iran or China or any other adversarial nation to try to influence the election. But I also think it's fair to say that a few memes or videos in the vast sea of political commentary is not going to make much of a difference in this election, nor has it in past elections as well. What did make a difference in the last election is the lies about Hunter Biden's laptop that more than four dozen former intelligence officials lied about in the middle of that campaign. And most networks, to include this one, bought that lie hook, line, and sinker. That did make a difference in the election. But I think a few videos or commentaries, which again, you shouldn't do if you're out there in the business of commentating on elections, um, is not going to make a difference in the vast sea of commentary we see. When Cotton brings up the Hunter Biden laptop controversy, he stirs strong emotions tied to honesty and openness. His assertion that the media and intelligence agencies peddled lies by branding the laptop as Russian disinformation fits into a broader conservative narrative that demands accountability from these institutions. The idea that these authorities manipulated the truth to influence an election is seen as a betrayal of democratic principles, fostering a deep sense of mistrust. CNN's mention of Dana Bash's ex-husband's involvement in spreading false information around the laptops only fans these flames heightening fears of elite collusion. To many, Cotton's words about how most media outlets swallowed the lie hole, reinforced the belief that powerful entities are systematically deceiving the public to control the narrative. The Hunter Biden scandal, framed by Cotton, becomes not just a story about a laptop, but a larger symbol of the public's battle for authenticity and honesty in politics. The willingness to live in uncomfortable truths is core to his message, contrasting sharply with the idea that intelligence officials, by misleading the public, have shirked their duty to uphold truth. This, Cotton suggests, is a grave ethical failure, contributing to the corrosion of trust in both moral and political realms. The widening gap between the public and institutional power, fed by dishonesty from the media and intelligence agencies, continues to fracture trust. The growing distrust isn't just an abstract feeling, it shapes political reality. As citizens see their democratic processes swayed by forces beyond their control, it stirs a sense of helplessness. This alienation drives polarization, pushing people into ideological bubbles where their beliefs are constantly reinforced rather than challenged. Fear of manipulation leads to deeper division as the public becomes increasingly wary of those in power. The focus on figures, like Dana Bash's ex-husband, as part of a disinformation campaign underscores this psychological tendency to evade responsibility. Blaming external forces, like foreign governments, allows individuals and institutions to avoid confronting the more significant issue of how disinformation distorts public perception, fueling the larger cultural divide. 